Hello, everyone, and welcome to our complimentary webinar today, Document Control for Ransom. We're excited to have you with us, and we're excited to have our featured presenter here with DQS, and thank you again for registering. We will have time for a Q&A session at the end of our presentation, so be sure to submit your questions during the presentation in the chat box provided. So let's go ahead and move forward with our presentation today. I want to talk a little bit about our company, the ISO 9001 Group. We are a consulting, auditing, and training company here based in Houston, Texas. Our mission is to help companies improve their operations and reduce their risk through their management systems. Our consultants have an average of 25 years of experience, and we are an ISO 9001 certified company ourselves. We are also accredited by the Better Business Bureau with an a rating. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the ISO 9001 group on your favorite social media. We have announcements on upcoming webinars as well as events and tips and articles we post, so be sure to check that out. As I mentioned previously, we will have a Q&A session at the end of our webinar, so be sure to submit your questions in the chat feature. You want to make sure you stay logged on during our presentation. You don't want to miss the answers to these critical questions. I'd like to present our speaker today, Mr. Sabrata Guha, who serves as the Director of IT Services with DQS, Inc. Mr. Guha has over 33 years of experience in information technology and is an SEI authorized instructor for CMMI. He specializes in ISO 9001, ISO 20000, ISO 27001, and many other standards. So thank you again, Mr. Guha, for joining us today, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to him to begin our presentation. Thank you, Victoria, for the introduction, and welcome all in this webinar. Thank you for registration. So today's subject is uh, ransomware for document control. But before we get started, I want to give a quick introduction about um, our company. Um, our company name is DQS Inc. We are a global certification body. The genesis of DQS is it is formed by a group of shareholders, and this pie chart shows three major entities, DGQ, which is, stands for German Association for Quality, which is equivalent for ASQ in America, under Writers Laboratory, which is UL, and DIN is a major standard publishing company in Germany. DQS and UL merged in the year 2008. Um, UL still have 40% stake in this company, but it's called as a DQS. So this is this brings in a rich heritage of quality and reliability. So our America headquarters is um, in Illinois, and our president is Brad McRae. Moving to the next slide, um, this gives a quick glimpse of the different portfolio of certification services which DQS offers. We have some industry-specific certifications like aerospace, medical devices, automotive, food safety, and hygiene. And there are other standards uh, which cut across uh, the industry verticals like IT information security, quality management, sustainability, occupational health and safety. So you can also see our social media sites, and we'll encourage you to follow us, um, watch or subscribe to our blog, and follow us in the social media. Now moving into the subject of today's presentation is the ransomware. And I guess uh, I don't have to explain what the ransomware means. You might have seen, and I'm sure you have seen it everywhere over the news media, the major ransomware attacks on the various corporates. What happens here is cyber criminals that plant some malicious code in your computer and which locks your file. So they're kind of taking hostage by 
by preventing you to access some of your important corporate assets which are stored in the form of documents. And then they demand money to unlock that. They ask you to make a payment using uh, bitcoins in some agencies which is located in some offshore sites. And there are instances where the, even after paying ransom, the files were not unlocked. Let's talk about some of the, the, the history of ransomware, when it started, and some of the major outbreaks. This is around since the beginning of 2011, but those days um, people have not paid much attention to it or does not pay separate attention. It was treated as more of a virus outbreak. Until 2013, when first the crypto locker ransomware broke loose that infected about half a million computers worldwide. And that is kind of a beginning of a ransomware era. We do not have um, the amount where the various companies had to pay to release their, comp their machines or their applications from the grip of ransomware. But 2013 certainly made the era of beginning of a ransomware. And that hits its peak in 2017 with the spread of WannaCry virus, which actually wreaked havoc worldwide. It spread like wildfire fire across the globe. It brought down hospitals, radio stations, commercial establishments. Uh, estimated economic loss in this couple of days was about four billion. According to the Justice Department, um, in US alone the ransomware has costed our economy around 109 billion dollar till now and it is still increasing. The next last bullet says, although we say we see the total number of ransomware attack has gone down in 2018, however, there is an upsurge of the attack on the large enterprises that went up by 12 percent. So how ransomware spread? As if uh, from the definition it starts like uh, your computer is being infected or an individual is being infected. So how does it become such a global phenomenon? Now in today's connected world, you know, everybody is connected to his or her own company network. So if my machine gets infected by clicking a malicious link, that infection spreads to my exchange server, to the other computers connected to the network, and eventually it lands up to the file server of my company where all my critical files resides and then it started encrypting the files. So it's kind of a chain reaction just like a, a little fire lit in one corner of a forest it eventually turns out becoming a massive forest fire. This is exactly how the ransomware or any virus for that matter spreads. Here is some of the definitions of some different types of ransomware which we are seeing these days. The original one is a crypto malware, which is a common form of ransomware, which was basically encrypting a file. And the, the technology of encryption was actually invented to protect, ensure security of your files, that you are transferring a sensitive information using email so we tend to encrypt the attachment so that if anybody get hold of this, you know, interrupts your email, won't be able to open the attachments because you need a passcode or a decryption code to open that encrypted files. Now these cyber criminals are using the same technology in their advantage. Once they get access to your file server, they start encrypting your files. And unless you get the key which is required to decrypt the files, you will only see the file names in your folders, but you won't be able to open any one of these files. The second form of uh, ransomware are called lockers, which basically attacks at the operating system level. Here, your whole computer is being locked, as if 
somebody changed your user ID and password of your machine. So you're just not able to log into your machine. And every case, you get a screen which shows that your system is locked, and this is what you need to pay, and this is the address, and this is your time. The third form, which all of you I'm seeing have experienced at some point of time, that suddenly you're working on a computer, and a pop-up window pops up, says, hey, your computer has virus. And then that gives you blah, blah, this is what you need to do, and allow us to scan your machine. And they go to the extent that if you are running McAfee or Norton antivirus in your machine, the screen will mimic exactly it's a Norton or McAfee message. And they ask you to click the link to run a complete scan of the machines. And that's where when you click that, they infect your machine. Fourth form is a kind of a benign app softwares which they install in your machine which steals confidential information about you. And typically they target your picture library, your video libraries, and of course your files. And whenever they find something compromising about you, they start threatening you, blackmailing you that. Unless you pay, we are going to publish it in the web. The last one is called a ransomware as a service. And that shows how ransomware is now being a commodity. In cloud computing in age, we are familiar with all these terms like a software as a service, or SaaS, platform as a service, as a PaaS. Now here, ransomware as a service. A group of hackers is offering it as a service. Somebody who has an intention to create a ransomware attack but don't have the technological knowledge or competency, now you hire this guy's service. They will do it for you, and they will take 20 or 30 percent of the amount you're getting in return. So that makes it more affordable and easily available for anybody who has an intent but didn't have a means earlier to launch a ransomware attack. Now they have something at the service. And conveniently, all of these guys are located someplace where none of our law enforcement agency can reach them. Now, how the attack starts, very common form is that, which is called a phishing attack. You get an email from a known entity, like in this case is a FedEx, and it came to me and says that, yeah, I need to update my current address to so that they can deliver a package. Now, whenever you receive something which don't look normal, it's a very good practice is just to click on the <coughs> sender's name. Now it expands the whole email address and you can see it is not coming from FedEx, it is coming from a phony email address. So even if you get a mail from your colleague and if he is requesting for something which is not normal, just click and check that is it the real person who is sending the email or somebody spoofing his email identity and sending you a map. Other form is very common, which is called a social engineering practice, where somebody tries to be friend with you in a you know, LinkedIn platform, and they establish a communication, exchange a couple of emails with you, so now the name is familiar to you. He's not, no longer a stranger. Now this guy will come to you and say, hey, there is an you know, opportunity, there's a job opening in our company, and I see your profile is a good fit here. Would you be interested to apply for that? If yes, just click this link. And once you click that link, it opens up a web page which, is, which looks very real, but you are entering your personal data in a fictitious place and you are giving them access to your machine to launch a ransomware or any other attack. The second form is a pop-up message I was talking about. You suddenly see the pop-up coming up and saying it is a virus, so you need to scan your machine and allow us to scan your machines. In every case, never allow them to scan the machine. Even if you have a Norton or McAfee or any other antivirus and the pop-up window also mimics the same company, always close the program and launch your own scanning using your own antivirus. Don't let an outside window scan your machine. 
never ever allow them to do that. Third one, and I did receive a call. A call from Microsoft reporting their founding problem in my computer system and they need to, I should allow them access so that they can fix it. I heard story that people receive call from NSA or API or IRS. Always remember Microsoft never monitors anybody's machine. And if any of the law enforcement agencies have something to do with your computer, they will show up at your doorstep. They will never call. So tips for safety, as I said, for your document control system or documents, it is always better to use a proper document management software instead of leaving all your documents as a as a file system in a Microsoft Windows or Unix. They're a lot more vulnerable there for encryption or ransomware attack as opposed to if you use a document management system like SharePoint or any other third party systems. Their, their file systems are protected inside the applications. If it is a cloud based, you always have a safety that even if your client side get impacted, you have a backup safe secure in the cloud. Always keep your antivirus current. When you're busy typing on your computer and you see your virus signature needs to be updated, it slows down your machine, it's sometimes annoying. We try to postpone this update. We tend to postpone the Windows update for our convenience. It's a very, very bad practice. Never compromise with that. So this is a patching of operating system, which is said whenever you get a message that your Windows needs to update or install a patch, that should be your first priority. Take regular backup for your backup schedule because that's the fail-proof system of recovering your files in the event of a ransomware attack. I have example of a two of our customers. One of them had to pay $5 million to a group to unlock their files. Another company had very decent up-to-date backups. All they had to do to shut down their system and rebuild everything in a day without paying a penny to that. So if your backups are up to date, you are much better off paying or against any of the ransomware attack. And never open any attachments or links sent by a stranger or a known entity or a known person where the request seems odd or social engineering where somebody try to be friendly with you and try to do you something which is not normal. Let's keep going. I just covered this one. So what is next? Where we are heading? That's very scary. And I am not trying to sound cynical, but this is what is the possibilities. Now, you're all aware of Internet of Things, IoT, connected homes. So everywhere is internet and all devices are connected, right? We have Alexa, Google Home, turning off our lights, locking and unlocking our main doors. Guess what? They are the most vulnerable elements. Now, it is very easy for these guys to get control of it. And one day you come back from your work, try to unlock your main door from your smartphone and get a message, it has been locked. Now you have to pay a ransom to get it unlocked. And that's where I was talking earlier that it's now becoming commoditized using the RAS, ransomware as a service. Now they're not looking for half a million dollar or hundred thousand dollars. They may be asking for $500 to unlock your doors. But just do the math. If they can unlock 5,000 doors in a day and get $500 from each one, it's not creating a huge impact, but individually they're collecting a sizable amount of money. Automobile, all the smart cars. The hackers have uh, opportunity, they can even stall your car in a remote deserted highway. Now you have to pay a ransomware to get it started back, 
or look for a hitchhike, a ride for someone else. Two years back in Las Vegas, uh, Black Cat um, workshop, the, hack, the ethical hackers, they demonstrated how the Toyota Prius can be completely taken over by a hacker and control the car as they wish. And the most scary part is the smart pacemaker. Now you have a pacemaker installed in your body and you, that can be regulated using a smartphone or an, another external devices. They're also susceptible to this attack. And once somebody gets control of your pacemakers, guess what can happen? Now they are not giving you 72 hours or 48 hours. They are asking money in minutes. Otherwise, they will start slowing down your heart rate. You'll be missing heartbeat. I know I'm sounding cynical, but these are all the possibilities, and particularly when, because all these connected devices, all these little apps which we run in our smartphones, they do not have that security features built in. And that's the biggest risk as a community we are running with the advancement of the technology. So that's the landscape of um, ransomware, and I would like to turn it back to Victoria and uh, I'll be happy to answer if you have any. Victoria. Okay. Q&A. Wonderful. Thank you, Sabrata. Excellent presentation. We do have some questions here that were submitted to us, so I'll go ahead and um, introduce our first question. Is there a standard that we can use to combat ransomware? Well, if the common answer is uh, yes, absolutely. You have to adopt some of the security management standards like ISO 27001 or NIST 853, which requires to build in some discipline in terms of what I just said, that updating your um, antivirus, patching your operating system, taking regular backups, uh, taking precautions, creating awareness among the employees, so definitely any one of these standards helps drive this culture in the company. Wonderful. Our next question, should we register this risk in our risk register? Absolutely. This is always a risk and it is risk for any enterprise, any companies. Our next question is, is there a specific size or type of company um, they are targeting? So far, they're targeting only the enterprises, the companies, where they can get a sizable amount of money, at least, you know, 50K or half a million. But as I said, that now it is not a very easy target. Most companies have a robust backup system, so it's not always they're getting money from the company. They're installing it from their backups. So the next wave, which is expected, which was on the IoT segment, which was my last slide, where they will now start targeting individuals, where they will not make huge money, but there will be a huge number of ad sources for them to get this kind of money. Okay, we do have one more question. And so what type of file management system would you recommend? Well, most commonly used is a SharePoint. But there are a lot of other file management systems um, are in use. So like we have a system we use in our companies, um, Easy, then there's the Microsoft Dynamics, and you can do some research in the market, but it is always better to use a file management system as opposed to keeping it as an unprotected standalone files in your directory. Okay, and that concludes our Q&A session. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Sabrata Guha again for joining us as our featured presenter and providing his expert insight um, on this topic. And so I want to encourage you to reach out to us at 832-326-9796 or at info at ISO9001group.com to continue the discussion with us. Or if you have any questions, you know, reach out to us. And don't forget to like and follow us on social media to stay up to date on when our next complimentary webinar will be, as well as additional management system tips and training opportunities. This webinar will be available on our site for your use. And thank you again, everyone, for joining us, and have a quality day. Thank you, Victoria.